Well... Hello everyone, this is Pastor Roland P. Joyner of the New Covenant Church of God in Christ. I'm here on this evening and I'm glad that you have joined me. Come on, just clap your hand. Yes, sir. Clap your hand. <laughs> While we allow some others to get on, you can just enjoy the music. A little late this evening, but that's all right. We're here. Tap those hands. This is Jonah, you know what? I think we're doing the same thing that we did last week. I saw a check that she see us. Bear with us a few minutes, we'll be right with you. Just want to make sure that everyone can get on. Last week, there was a problem with others getting on. So just enjoy that. Clap your hands. All right. All right. We're going to go ahead on and start. Hopefully, uh, people are on. So we usually begin uh, with prayer. And I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you for this time that you've given to us to come to you and to learn of you on this evening. Lord, yeah, we yeah. pray that you will uh, be with us and give us the wisdom and the understanding that we need or I need today to or tonight to give your people what they need in Jesus name we pray and thank God amen God bless you mother hunt I see you so evidently I'm good yeah somebody else put that thumbs up so I know you're here all right all right well this evening we have a good subject uh, I want to talk about the what ifs syndrome. The what if syndrome. You say, well, why would you want to talk about that? Well, it's because it's causing a lot of people to miss out on the things that uh, the Lord has for them. And if you can look at your screen, you may see it. The thought is there. Never let your what ifs keep you from the potentials of what can be <laughs> of life. I know that sounds a little strange, uh, but uh, I will explain it as we go along. And I'll uh, read it again. Never let your what ifs keep you from the potential of what can be of life. And I'm talking about those fears that you may have about what if this and what if That's that. Right. Um, many times it causes us to not really do the things that we can do or somebody say launch out into the deep or mm -hmm. others say take a leap of faith. Mm -hmm. We use all kind of terms when it comes to this. And with believers and with those that know Christ, uh, it is very, very important that we are able 
to uh, allow the Lord to lead us and to guide us mm -hmm. uh, into the places and the things that he wanted to do. Now, I've always said that nobody was born for nothing. Yes, 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 yes. Everybody has a purpose, purpose and, a and a reason for being here on this mm -hmm. earth. God never allows us to uh, exist for nothing. So uh, everybody has something that uh, they can contribute to in life. Uh, and many times life can bring us to places that we uh, are a little afraid of or it's unknown to us uh, in some areas because it's strange because we've never been there before. It's almost like going to a new city uh, like I yeah, did <laughs> or unfamiliar territory and uh, trying to find your way around. And most of the time, uh, we use our GPS because we depend on it. And when it go out, we go berserk. Mm -hmm. So many times um, in life, period, that happens uh, to us. And man, oh man, haven't we had some unknowns and some uncertainties within the last uh, year or so. And I'm going to read that. Uh, statement again I, I usually put quotes but I think it's more of a statement in the last couple of weeks never let your what ifs <coughs> keep you from the potentials of what can be of life uh, and many times we cause that what if this again I'll say and what if that <coughs> And because of it, we will not go forward. We will not um, do anything that we are not familiar with, anything that has to do with change. And if you notice, America uh, was like that in this last year. They had the what if mm -hmm. <laughs> syndrome. What, what if the government is doing this? What if somebody else is doing that or the other thing? All kind of conspiracies about a whole lot of things uh, that has transpired. So I want to talk about that this evening. Most people think that, uh, well, you know, the church has nothing to do with what ifs. Yes, we do. We have a whole lot to do with that. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of, of that. But first of all, I want to give you two definitions. I want to give you the definition of fear. For this particular lesson, fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. I'm going to read that again. Fear, an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. So in this particular uh, teaching, if I could use that word, uh, uh, instruction, um, the word is, that is the meaning of the word. And if I was to do a, a short definition of it, I would say it's the opposite of faith. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's one word. The other word that I want to talk about, I keep on looking over like this because my wife is over there. She's part of this Bible study, yes, yes. and she's my favorite uh, student. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, again, uh, the second word that I want to give you the definition of for this particular teaching is potential. Is having or showing the capacity to become or develop into something in the future. I'm going to read that again. Having or showing the capacity or the ability to become or develop into something in the future. Uh, you know, and most of us, we don't have a crystal ball. We can't see... Uh, the future. We can dream about the future, mm -hmm. and many times we can even uh, aspire in some ways for the future, but we really don't know how things are going to turn out until that happens. We can even plan mm -hmm. 
for the future, but we really don't know whether it's going to be a success or whether it's going to be a failure uh, or, or whatever. Uh, and many times this is both in our spiritual life and in our physical life, our natural life. Many times we are afraid. My, my son wrote this song, and I talk about it often, uh, Treasures Lost. Uh, because people feared um, failure or feared uh, going forward and using the phrase "what if," mm -hmm. if what if I fail, mm -hmm. what what if and how am I going to do this or that, and what if uh, I do it and uh, it doesn't uh, turn out the way I want it? If I get married, why should I get married? What if I do? Uh, you know, will it be a success or will it be a failure? A lot of those things are natural things that people uh, use. And we can't say that we have never in our life mm -hmm. used the what if or had the what if syndrome. But we know that that can cause us to be afraid to go forward. That can right. cause us to be afraid to try new things. It can cause that. And many times, in our, even in our spiritual life, uh, once we are believers, many times people are afraid to witness mm -hmm. to people because they're afraid of the outcome or what may happen, the unknown. Uh, many are afraid even to join churches, or many, when they join churches, they're afraid to uh, get up and testify. They're afraid to uh, sing in the choir or, yeah, yeah. or, or commit themselves to something because they don't know how it's going to turn out if I could put it like that so and a lot of times many people spend lots of time worrying about things that could go wrong or happen bad in the life and that's not a good way to go around life uh, you know worrying about the what ifs uh, and most of the time it's not the good that people what if about, it's usually the bad. Let's talk about two people that had enough faith. And I said fear and doubt is the opposite of faith. So I got to talk about faith uh, if I'm going to talk about fear uh, because it's just faith in the opposite direction. Um, Abraham, let's take him for instance. The Lord told him to go uh, and get out of where he was and to go to a new place that he had never seen before. And he promised him that he was going to do certain things for him. And uh, Abraham did just what the Lord told him to do at that moment. He didn't say, what if? And I don't see in the scripture where he said, what if in his initial uh, stepping out or on his first leap of faith, if I could call that, because most people don't know it, but Abraham's name was Abram before he became Abraham. And he was a pagan worshiper. He didn't even worship the living God. He worshiped uh, uh, the, you know, the idols, uh, pagan God. So he stepped out from his comfort zone and went and stepped toward where the Lord had told him to go. And he told him, you know the story. He told him that he was going to multiply his seed and that he would be the father of many nations, all those kind of things. Now, he didn't have the what if syndrome, evidently. He didn't show it. Not in his initial, like I said, his initial stepping out on a leap of faith. But rather he went and uh, obeyed God and left his place that he was comfortable in. And uh, we know the outcome of that. Thousands and thousands of years later, uh, we find out that Father Abraham had many sons and many sons <laughs> had... Father Abraham, <laughs> you know people sing it. So uh, he has 
uh, the 12 tribes that came from his lineage. And then in the end, uh, Jesus is born in Matthews in the New Testament, and he becomes the son of the living God. That's God with us, Emmanuel, which mm -hmm. means God with us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so God became flesh and dwelt in John 1. It says, God, John, St. John 1, it says, and he became flesh and dwelt among us. So uh, we know that, but it all started with Abraham as far as the plan that God had for coming and the lineage in which God came through. And Abraham was that lineage. And he obeyed him and went out and we see the results of that. But in between all of that, there was a lot of doubt. I must admit there was. But his initial uh, going out was not doubt. It was a leap, and I'll say it again, a leap of faith. Uh, and again, I said I wanted to use for thought, what if the what if syndrome. And when I use it in that term of the what if syndrome, it is in the way of how people think about their future. And they think that this may go wrong that may go wrong. People spend, believe it or not, people are up, many people all night, uh, you know, worrying about and fearing that uh, maybe the next day uh, that uh, they won't be able to uh, do the things that they think that they could do. For instance, uh, you have a job and you have an interview for a new job and you stay up all night worrying about how it's going to turn out. I tell people, don't worry about things that you have no control over. If you don't have the control over someone else, uh, you can do your best in what you do or what situation you are in, but you cannot control the mind of other people. Just do your best. And you know, the Bible lets us know that we can do all things through Christ that strengthen us. In other words, we have the ability, the capacity to do more, but it's in or through Christ that strengthen us. Let me read for you 2 Timothy 1 and 7, uh, because it's important for the believer to know this. It says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. It tells us that God has not, scripture said, God has not given us. Now, I didn't say that we didn't fear. I said we don't have the spirit of fear. But he's given us uh spirit of, I mean, he's given us power, he's given us love, and he's given us a sound mind. He says, he that keepeth his mind stayed on him, he will keep him in what kind of peace? Perfect. Perfect peace. Somebody ought to write perfect peace. Ought to type it in there. Perfect peace. He that keepeth his mind, what? Stayed on him. So, we don't have the spirit of fear. Now, someone can frighten us. Somebody can go boo and scare you in that aspect because that's an emotion that we have uh, and a uh, caution, if I could use that word, uh, when we think that danger is around. And so, the so what is spirit, a spirit, how can someone have the spirit of fear? Because that's the spirit of fear as opposed to just fear. A person with the spirit of fear, they they may uh, have a nervous breakdown because they are afraid of everything. All 
time. All every time you turn around, they they are afraid. They are afraid many people to walk out the front door because they use the what if syndrome. What if I go out and there's somebody out there waiting on me? Uh, many people, when it comes to driving, they they are afraid to get into a car and drive because they're scared that yeah. somebody's going to hit them <laughs> or so they're going to get in an accident. Uh, there are others who will not uh, go to college because they feel like they, they don't have the ability to uh, finish college or to make it through. Uh, it, there are many, and that's the reason I use the never let the what ifs because there's more than one thing that can keep us from the potential of what can be in our life. And there are many things that people can do. And I, again, I'll go back to my uh, son's song, uh, Treasures Lost. You, you, you have so many people who, who could have written books and they went to their grave because they could have written a book. But because of the fear of failure, if, if I could use that word, or the, the, the fear that they would never get uh, the book published, some may even have the money to do it, but they, they, they didn't believe in themselves enough to believe that that could be done. And so uh, it was never written. Books were never written. Songs were never sang. Uh, buildings were never built. All those kind of things because of the what if syndrome. What if people don't like me? You 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 you're a good singer, you have good talent, but you worried about the people. What if they don't like me? All kinds of stuff that we we would uh, would happen in our life. In fact, how about moving? You move for a new place. I I did it. Uh, move from an old place. Uh, people were telling me, are you crazy? Are you, are you really going to do it? Do that? Uh, and, and I could have listened to their what ifs, but I listened to God's I can. <laughs> he said, I can do all things through Christ that stri strengthen me. That's the can be. Uh, and that's Philippians 4.13. Uh, Paul writes, I can do oh. not some things, but I can do oh. all things, not by myself, but through Christ. And that is the advantage of the believer. We have the Lord in our lives. We have, he said, he said that strengtheneth me. I can do all things through Christ that gives me the power or the strength to do uh, what I normally could not do by myself. And I want to say this, you're never alone. If you have Christ in your life, there go another if, but that if <laughs> is a, is a, is a, uh, is used in a different way. Yeah, yeah. It's used in a way of, uh, uh, I would say, a option. Or alternative. Mm -hmm. So, but in the case of the what if syndrome, it is what breeds fear into people's life. And that's why I, I use that scripture because in the sense of, uh, you know, us, our emotions causing the belief of someone or something is dangerous. You know, the truth is uh, <laughs> getting out the bed can be dangerous because you can slip and fall. So we don't worry about those things. We allow ourselves to uh, believe that we're going to get out of bed safely. We're going to uh, get in our car and we're going to drive the work safely. And actually, uh, through that, you know, there could be a drunk driver on the other side. Uh, but we can't be going, what if a drunk driver come over and hit me? Well, you'll never get to work. If you keep on worrying about uh, that kind of thing, uh, now you should be cautious and you should be concerned, mm -hmm. but you should not worry uh, or you should not fear. Okay, let's talk about Moses. 
Moses was the chosen one to lead the children out of Israel. Or, no, I'm sorry, out of Egypt. What am I talking about? Israel. Out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, when God spoke to him, he, at first he went and saw the burning bush, saw this big old thing, bush burning, and not con being consumed. And he goes over there, and he, 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 he finds out that God is there. And the Lord tells him, take off your shoes, for you are on holy ground. First of all, God established what kind of ground it was. And I want to say this. Wherever God is, is holy ground. Did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. Of course you did. Of course you did. Where the Lord is, is the fullness of joy also. So we know where he is. Uh, you know, there is peace. There is joy. There is comfort. Even in the time of uh, chaos and tragedy. So, uh, we have Moses here, and he said in Exodus 4 and 10, And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here for two for, nor since the ha thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech, and of a slow tongue. Now, what he's doing really, y'all, is giving an excuse of not being able to go to the children of Israel. <laughs> he, he uh, you know, to go to them and tell them, or go to Pharaoh, rather, and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Y'all know we sing the song, let my people go, go down, Moses. We sing the song. And uh, he had a uh, uh, what if syndrome. Boy, you know, who shall I say have sent me? He had all kind of questions, and I suppose he, he, it is okay to have questions. Mm -hmm. But he was trying or beginning to develop uh, a what if spirit. Well, if I'm not eloquent at speech, then how am I going to be able to uh, express to uh, Pharaoh that you want your people to go. Now, this is what God did. This, this is important. And the reason I say this is important is because we need to know that, especially in the, in the spiritual world, that the Lord is not going to tell you to do something that he has not equipped you or put the equipment there for you or the way there for you to do what he has called you to do. This is what he says in the 11th verse. This is Exodus 4 and 11. He says this, And the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh the dumb? Or deaf? Or the seeing? Or the blind? Have I not, have I, or have not I the Lord? In other words, I am the God of everything. And, he, and then later on in the scripture, he said, you tell him, them, that I am have sent you. And I am whatever you have need of. And we found out when they were in the wilderness, God sure enough took care of them. And he fed them manna. And in the end, it's even witnessed uh, that their clothes didn't even uh, wear out. When they reached the promised land, their clothes were like they were when they left, started out. And I'm not saying they were the same clothes that they had on but what I'm in, in the beginning. But what I'm saying is God provided for them. Uh, what they needed, the clothing and the food and all that they needed uh, on their way. So, you know, if they had used the what if mm -hmm. syndrome, they may have feared into, uh, feared themselves or talked themselves into not doing what God had called them to do. And that's what the enemy uses many times with us. 
in order for us not to reach our potential or get to the place where God wants us to be. Many people turn around and, and say, I can't do this or I can't do the other thing uh, because, and we use excuses, even like Moses used his speech impediment as a uh, reason uh, not to be the spokesman for God to, uh, to Pharaoh. Uh, there, there is many people even today who are miserable because they have such fear in their heart. Now, I'm not talking about the fear of God. You got to understand, every word has more than one meaning. And when we say we feel fear God, we mean that we reverence God. We are careful not to disrespect God. We honor him. We uh, pay him attention. And we don't just overlook him. For he says, thou shalt have no other God before me. Uh, so he is our God. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is our King of kings and Lords of lords. He's our bright and morning star. He is everything that we have need of. So we don't, we don't fear him in the way of, oh, I can't even go to sleep tonight. Because God is going to do something to me. But we say, now lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord what my soul to take. So we pray to our God and our, our Father for, you know, comfort. Now, let me give you another scripture that uh, I want you to deal with when it comes to us, uh, you know, going forward and not backward when it comes to uh, doing the things that we can do and going and, and, and to our, or doing our, having our best foot forward uh, and our best potential. Uh, this is uh, another person talking uh, in uh, Psalms 23. And when I say Psalms 23, everybody know who I'm talking about because we call it many people call it the 24 I mean 23rd Psalm uh, so it says this it's, he says in the fourth verse uh, he said yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil okay we know he's in a situation but he has the capacity to believe God in spite of mm -hmm. his situation. And, and God told him he was going to be king. I talked about that Sunday. God told him he was going to be king. And uh, he believed him. Mm -hmm. uh, he, if he died, he couldn't be king. <laughs> so he knew he was going to live. So he called this. He said, yea, though I walk through, notice he said through, the low points of life or the shadows of death, which, which he was running from Saul because Saul was trying to kill him. So he says, though these things are in my life, uh, I will fear oh, what? No, no evil. I, I will not... Uh, let this un have an unpleasant emotion caused by the belief that someone or something is dangerous, likely to cause pain or a threat. He didn't think uh, the king to be a threat, mm -hmm. but he knew that he was had the authority, and he didn't even allow himself to do anything to Saul. He could have taking Saul out many times. Uh, and we Jesus. know of two of those. He had chances. Mm -hmm. And he didn't take Saul's life. He, he didn't worry because he knew that all, everything was in God's hands. And even though he was in a place uh, of discomfort, if I could use that word, uh, he was able to overcome the emotion of fear. And we got to learn to overcome uh, the uh, 
the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. We have to believe God for our future, our future for good and not for evil. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's scripture too. You know, God knows the plans that he has for us. And I keep bringing that up because that's important for many of us who have uh, really doubted whether God really has a plan for our life. And he does. He has a plan for you. So don't you fear. Uh, you do all you can do and God will do the rest. That, yeah. That's my that's my wife saying. <laughs> my wife said, do all you can do and God will do the rest. So uh, it many times it may not turn out the way we think it should. Mm -hmm. It may not. I admit it may not. But I can tell you this, and we know that all things work together yeah, for the good of them that love God and the call according, according to his yes. purpose. That's Romans 8, 28, that tells us that. So, so I want to admonish you really on today. It's a little, it might be a little shorter than usual. But I want to admonish you on today to uh, not fear. Don't fear the unknown uh, when it comes to God. Because God knows all things. He knows our future. He knows our past. He knows our present. And if we are, that go that uh, subjective, you know, if we allow God to lead us and to guide us into all truth, then we will prevail. We will, you know, be able to have the victory. We will be able to succeed in the things in this life and the life to come. How many of you want eternal life? I know I do. I want eternal life through Jesus Christ. I, I want to go back with him when he come. I want to uh, make heaven my home. That's you know, right. I, I want to walk around Jerusalem all day. <laughs> as, the, as the song said, I don't, I don't, I want to feast on that milk and honey. Uh, my dad used to be a quartet man. He used to sing that song, Feast on milk and honey, one of these days, one of these days. Oh, I <laughs> want to read that holy city. He wanted to view that holy city. So, um, you know, that's what we want to do. But, you know, don't miss out on life. Don't... Uh, get into a place of what if. That's right. Don't do that. Don't get into that place where you allow that to cause you to fear. Now, you should count up the cost. The Bible says count up the cost. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, before you before you make a decision, before you count do something, count up the cost before you do whatever you do. That's different. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about getting to a place where you stagnate in your spiritual growth because you won't go forward. You stagnate in your natural growth because you won't go forward because you are afraid of what you don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I've seen it. Even Job did it. Uh, Job said, the thing that I fear most has come upon me. And the thing that he feared most was losing his children. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He feared, uh, you know, losing his wealth. Evidently, he feared it because he said, the thing that I feared most has come upon me. That's why I says fear is the, doubt is the opposite uh, direction of faith. Mm -hmm. Because you believe in it, you what you don't see will come to pass. <laughs> and that's what you're doing. So we should be positive about how we think uh, when it comes to where God wants to take us and uh, what God want to bless us with. Many people are scared of house payments, so they won't go get a house. Mm -hmm. And they all their life, they pay somebody else's uh, mortgage, mortgage mm -hmm. because they are afraid that they can't get a loan. They're afraid that of rejection. And that's another thing that people fear. Uh, what if, you know, they reject me? What if I'm not approved? Uh, all those kind of things. And we miss out because for some reason, and I've seen people even uh, when it comes to uh, going 
for a job. They won't go. They say, because I know that so-and-so, you know, got a better chance at it than I do. Well, you got a chance too. go. You might just get that job. You might. <laughs> I remember when it would come to my wife, uh, when I was uh, trying to court her and uh, others was trying to, and I remember, I didn't care what the odds was. They may have had more than me at the time. Uh, you know, they may have been more renowned than me at the time. But you know what? If, this is used in a different yes. way now, I what had if? not. What if? <laughs> and, I, and this is a, a forethought, Sister Jonah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what if I had not? Mm -hmm. went forward mm -hmm. and uh, tried. I, I would have missed out on the best thing in life well, thank you. besides from the Lord. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I went forward. Many things that I've done in life uh, not, not, not uh, worrying about the outcome in a way where I would not at least try. And I say to you, at least try. Leave the what ifs alone in the way of being so afraid of trying. Mm -hmm. Try it and see if it of what. Even say about the spirit it says, try the try spirit and see, see if it is of God. and see if it be of God. So you know many things that God wants us to launch forward with. We haven't launched forward with because we are afraid. Uh, we're afraid of the what ifs of life. So I'm saying to you, don't worry about the what ifs of what 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 ifs in the future in fact i'm going i'm going to give you some good advice here listen carefully think about and appreciate what is not what if <laughs> i'm going to say it again think about and appreciate the things that is because you have your children now today don't worry about what if they don't grow up in this way or what if they don't grow Enjoy them now. Thank God for them now. Thank God for your husband now. Thank God for your wife now. Thank God for your father or mother now. Don't worry about what if. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But more so, thank God for what is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God is my strength. God is my refuge and strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. All of this. So, you know, you know, I, I enjoy life. Don't go through life worrying yourself to death about what is. Just believe that what is will be. Whatever it is. Will come to pass. There you go. I like that. Uh, you know, whatever you need, God's got it. Mm -hmm. Whatever he, he, you uh, yeah, ask yeah, for, it can be yours. It can be yours. That's right. I'm glad that Abraham went forth and didn't wasn't a, wasn't afraid to the point where he would not move forward. I'm not saying that he wasn't somewhat concerned, but he was not afraid to the point where he did not go forward. He didn't have the what if syndrome in that way. And that's what I call the what if syndrome when you get to the place where it causes you to fear or to it paralyzes you from moving forward in your life. Uh, and I'm saying to you, you got to move on. Somebody said, hit them up, move them out, move them out, hit them up. <laughs> you got to do that every once in a while. You got to move forward. So I'm I'm encouraging you uh, to uh, move forward. Uh, be positive about life. Be positive about what God has for you in the future. And you may not know exactly what it is, but guess what? You know that it's going to work out for your mm -hmm. good. You know that God wouldn't give you a snake if you asked for bread. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we know those kind of things. So, uh, uh, you know, and, and I, you know, even, I, I think even many times 
when uh, we are getting ready, our children are getting ready to leave home. Many times we go, well, what if they don't make it? What, what if they get in trouble? Mm -hmm. Don't worry about that. God will take care of them. You just pray for them <laughs> and let God do the rest. You know, those are things. I tell people, don't worry about what you cannot do. You, you know, I, but you you know, you, you can't control what happens after certain people leave, you know, but you can control Amen. how you feel on the inside. I'm talking about the inside now because it's the inside that kills people, not the outside. And when I say it in the way, I mean man is his worst enemy. We, it's not people around you that's your worst enemy. You are your worst enemy. You can kill your own self uh, or cause your own self to make the wrong decision and destroy yourself. So it's the enemy within that uh, destroys and defeats, not the enemy without. Because you can see the enemy without, but it's the enemy within that causes many times that. So that's why uh, Paul said in Philippians, after all that, he said, I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me. And another one of those scriptures in there says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in trouble. <laughs> that he that is in doubt, he that is uh, in opposition mm -hmm. of good, which is evil, he that is in, he used the world in that aspect. And I know that it says the world, but I was just giving some examples or things that could be that's in the world, like trouble. In this world, you should have tribulation. You should have trouble. But I, he said, be of good cheer for what? I have overcome the world. So since God has overcome the world, since Jesus has overcome the world, now we have a chance to just sit back and sometimes relax and allow God to work out things for us. Because he will do it. He said He said to us, he even talked about vengeance. He said, vengeance is the mindset of the Lord, I will repay. So you don't even have to repay people that do you wrong. God, in the end, will repay. He says, uh, what, be not deceived, for God is not mocked. The word says, whatever a man sows, that, that shall he also reap. reap. The world says what comes around Ooh, goes around. <laughs> but let me get back to this, and I'm about to close. But never let your what ifs keep you from the uh, potentials of what can be of life or the can be's of life because there are many things that can be in your life. That's why I said can be's. So many things that God wants to do for you, but you have to make that step forward. You must come unto me, he said. Oh. So that's all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I shall give you rest uh, for your souls. Even that was used in a different content, uh, uh, connotation. Uh, he still says, come. So there's an action that we have to do. Come, come, which is in the uh, in the aspect of life, we must move forward on things that even we are in some ways afraid to. But we can step out and take that leap of faith and do what God has uh, so deemed for us to do. And even the things and dreams and, and that we have and visions that we have that God has given to us, launch forward. Do what, what Paul, I mean what Peter did. Launch into the deep. People, P Peter said, yeah, I've been there before and I failed. <laughs> but he said, launch out into the deep. And Peter said, look, we done fished all night, Lord. We caught nothing. But at thy word. He didn't say if. He said, but at thy word, I, I'll do it. And he did it. And because he did it, he was successful in bringing in many fish. Uh, bringing in income. And I know he had a smiling wife 
when he went home because he bought that money in and y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just want to throw that and slip that in there while, <laughs> while, I, while I was talking. So don't fear the unknown. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't cause it to make you not do uh, what God has called you to do or reach your fullest potential. For many of you out there have so much to offer in life, but you're afraid of rejection. Don't worry about rejection. Go and try it. You might be a surprise at the outcome. All right? So uh, that is my message for tonight or my uh, lesson for tonight on uh, on your own potential, on uh, reaching those potentials and not allowing the what ifs keep you from those potentials. God bless you. Love you. Uh, Love you, New Covenant. Love you, uh, virtual audience. Uh, I know you're real people. God bless you. I hope you had a good day. And I hope tomorrow is even better. Father, we thank you for this time that you've given to us. Oh, God, we pray right now that you will look on your people. Bless them in your name, I pray. Keep them in your name, I pray. God, allow them to be able to uh, just do the things that they know to do best in life uh, and to enjoy life and to uh, launch out into the deep to their greatest potential. In Jesus' name, we pray and thank you. Amen. All right, y'all. All right. We're getting ready to leave you. I leave you. With this, yeah. Let's leave. Let's turn it up a little bit. Come on, clap those hands. Give him praise. God bless you. Love you. Be safe. See you Sunday. See you Sunday.